What's up YouTube? This is John back with another episode of Engineering Awesome. Today we're going to do a real quick update on the CNC Plasma. Let's take a closer look at it. The CNC Plasma table that I'm building is really progressing very well. I'm to the point now where I need to start machining components. I've got the rails put on here. Um, I just had to cut some angle iron, drill some holes in it, line up the three by three quarter inch wall tubing, and then I tack welded it and then welded it solid and uh, everything is mounted real nice. Now, the reason why I went with quarter inch instead of eighth inch like I did for the legs here is because I planned on drilling and tapping it. So when you're drilling and tapping something, you really want to, if you have the ability anyway, you want to plan for a full diameter's worth of engagement. These are all M6 holes, so I needed six millimeter wall minimum. So went with 6.35 with the quarter inch wall tubing and the thread should hold really well. I'm not too concerned about it. I've already mounted the bearings on here and they move real nice. A little loud I imagine, but so I've gotten already a couple of questions on Instagram. What am I going to do if this side is not lined up and perfectly parallel with that side? Well, that's why I bolted this frame together. This frame is not welded together because I'm not a great fabricator, but I can make just about anything work. So if this needs to come up just a little bit to make sure that it's all lined up perfectly, all I'm going to do, pop these bolts out, lift this up get a die grinder and slot those holes and then I shouldn't have any issues at all with lining it up now I used M10 bolts so I should be able to snug those down really tight and I won't have any movement at all now with these rails I went through and I drilled and tapped every one of these I don't think it's really necessary I used a transfer punch I actually got a, a really great kit uh, I think it's a Nico kit which is Chinese but it, it works pretty good. I got it off Amazon. I'll go ahead and link that down below if you need a transfer punch. But all I did was put that transfer punch in here, go through and I, I hit it on every one of these. Then I came through with another punch, made that dent just a little bit bigger so that it would be easier to pick up with the uh, drill bit. And I got a really cheap corded drill and just went to town on every one of these. I ended up uh, going just slightly oversized on the tap drill size. So with metric, it's really, really easy to figure out what your tap drill is. So for an M6 with a one inch uh, thread pitch, you just basically take that thread pitch and subtract it from the diameter. So you need a five millimeter tap drill. I went with a 5.1 because frankly, it's English. Easy to get down at the tractor store if you need another one. And what that let me do was, without worry, power tap it. So I already knew I had all of these holes, so I just went through and power tapped every one of them with the uh, cordless drill. I didn't break a tap. I didn't really have anything that uh, caused me any concern. Now, I am actually, and I know this is going to sound ridiculous, but I'm really excited about the drill I got. In fact, let me grab it here. So this drill is absolutely a cheap Chinese drill. It's called Tack Life. That's pretty lame, but uh, I just needed one that was uh, powerful enough to get through quarter inch wall steel. I'm also going to use it for quarter inch aluminum, and I know you don't want to drill and tap aluminum uh, without using some kind of threaded insert, but with 25 holes it should be just fine. I just won't torque it down as much as I did here, but this here has got a 6 amp out six amp motor sorry it's also got a hammer drill setting I like having the handle for doing all of these holes it's also reversible and you can kind of set the the speed there's a little dial here on the trigger that you just turn and then what that lets you do is not press the trigger down completely so I had it fully there but uh, what you can do I found while I was drilling you know you're you're really putting a lot of effort into some of these so you push really hard and you can kind of override it so it's probably plastic in there but whatever uh, this is also a half inch chuck 
comes with the chuck key, place to put it. Just make sure you put it back. Obviously, I didn't. It's sitting right up there. Uh, I have to drill some holes in the electrical panel next, but that thing's been phenomenal. Uh, I used it to punch holes in, like I said, the electrical panel with a hole saw, 5 8 inch holes. I got to go get a 7, seven eighths and 1 inch to finish up the electrical panel, and then I'm going to be ready to mount that right here. Uh, and I can start running wiring, and <clears throat> we can get this thing rolling here pretty quick. I think probably by the end of the week I'll at least have motors turning and moving. It just probably won't be perfect. So the next part of this project is, I mean, the fabrication here is done other than the water table. So I've got some scrap material, some scrap aluminum that uh, I can make a block out of. It'll be really thick, but it won't matter. No big deal. So I'm going to go drill some holes in it, and I'm going to use the CNC actually to uh, spot drill those holes, and then I'll drill them with the, uh, the drill press. That way uh, I don't have to worry about it on the mill. I don't have a Jacobs chuck for the mill, so there's really no point in uh, buying a collet for whatever size drill I'm going to get. So I'm just, I just spot drill them and don't have to worry about it at all. Uh, what's going to be on this block is there will be four holes. It'll be spaced about like that. I wanted it as close as possible. I may try and shrink that up just a little bit, but the block will mount right about here. Um, in the model I have two and a half inch, but what I'm going to use is actually three inch, which I think is actually going to work out pretty well. So I'm going to have the overhang down below. What that'll let me do is mount a couple of pieces of like angle iron or something like that so that I can put the cable track on it. I'll be able to mount those a little bit lower than uh, I might typically be able to. I might even flip the angle iron over and then it'll give a, a real nice ledge for that to to kind of move on when I get the cable carrier. So I'll spot drill these eight holes and I'll spot drill two more holes here. And since it's inch thick, I've got plenty of thread engagement. And uh, what that'll let me do is put a piece of angle iron on here so that I can mount the gantry on it. And uh, that'll be threaded directly into the gantry and shouldn't have any issues. So we are really getting very close. Uh, after that, all I'll have to do is drill and tap the entire uh, piece of aluminum. I did find that doing one of these rails only takes about 13 minutes in mild steel, so uh, it should be pretty quick with uh, that drill to do all of it. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not real concerned about that. The part that I am still kind of tweaking is the Z-axis. Um, I bought some prox sensors to, to pick up the material that I'm cutting. I think that I might end up going with uh, some kind of bump sensor, uh, like what most people use, where it's on springs, and I don't know. I haven't I haven't quite decided there. I should be able to get the the motion portion of it down uh, real easy though. So that's that's next on the list. So uh, if you guys have any questions about this, I definitely like the comments. So make sure that you leave me a comment down below. Especially tell me if you're building your own CNC plasma table. I'm really interested in what everybody else's CNC plasma tables end up looking like. Uh, I love following them on YouTube. I uh, do a lot of CNC stuff there too. Now, some of the upcoming videos, I think I'm going to do a review on that uh, Tack Life, as ridiculous as that sounds, uh, corded drill. And I've been running the mill here behind me. As you can see, I added a, an E stop, and uh, I've been doing a bunch on that. So, I'm going to go ahead and do uh, probably some machining videos uh, for the parts that I'm going to be making here. Appreciate you guys watching, and uh, I will see you guys next time on Engineering Awesome.